Oh hey, Merry Christmas to one and all. For this special occasion, I'd like to share some of my childhood classics, the games that made me who I am today. So we're going to find out why I can't get a life. Video games, one of the greatest creations of mankind, a new way to play games while disassociating from family members, friends, and possible relationships. I didn't really know what video games were until my dad gave me the original iPad. I remember playing Angry Birds and a Kung Fu Panda game in this thing, but to this day it's still a debacle whether the games on your phone are considered real video games. So let's jump a few years later when my dad bought an Xbox 360. Most of my childhood video games originated from the 7th generation of gaming, mainly the Xbox 360. The 360 is THE console for most people, no offense. So let's see what are the games that I played with this bad boy. One game that I mostly remember is none other than LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. Even though I haven't played this game in a while, this is still my favorite game. I was a huge Marvel fanboy at the time and being able to play most of the well-known Marvel characters in a LEGO game is the dream. There are a ton of easter eggs in this game and there's so much stuff to do here. Challenges, side quests, even just the overworld. I usually hop into this game and just fly or swing around the world and whenever I feel bored doing so, I would just replay the story missions with different characters. See that's one of the main things I like about this game. You aren't required to play this specific character only in this specific mission, no. You can play as other characters with the same abilities in any story mission. There's a ton of replayability in this game and that's just one of the few reasons why this game is my favorite. Now speaking of LEGO games, I also played the classic LEGO Batman the video game. This is another childhood classic of mine and it's still a lot of fun to play. The different abilities are so fun to use and you can use them in these iconic missions. My favorite part of this game is the penguin boss fight, it's just so engaging and so fun. But my go-to game is still LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. While LEGO Batman offers a ton of great content, there's just more great content in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. Both of these games still hold the same amount of nostalgia anyway. By the way, this game comes in as a double pack with the game Pure. It's an off-road racing game where you drive a quad bike and do stunts. It's another game I also played back then, but it was never really my thing. The game is fun no doubt, but I didn't really play a ton of it back then. Also I found out that this game is published by Disney Interactive Studios. It's really weird seeing a Disney published game not having any reference to any Disney media in particular. Oh, and you can't forget Call of Duty. Yes, I'm still missing the original Modern Warfare, you angry? My go-to game in this trilogy is Modern Warfare 3. While some consider this game to be the worst in the trilogy, I didn't really care at all. Back then, I only played Call of Duty mainly for the campaign and the side modes, never the multiplayer. But since I mostly play COD for the campaign, does that mean I like MW3's campaign? No, it's not perfect, it's not great, but it's not bad either. But the campaign has some fun missions to play and that's why I keep coming back to this game. While the original Modern Warfare trilogy is great, you can't forget Black Ops. Call of Duty Black Ops 1 and 2 are some of my favorite games in the franchise. The story, the characters, and the gameplay, all of them still hold up to this day. But for me personally, Black Ops 2 is easily the best. You got the same characters from the first game and the addition of the new characters, all of them are well written and have a purpose in the story. You also got these side missions where you got to finish different tasks. Sure you can just skip them but they actually have a great deal with how the story changes. Of course you can't forget the multiplayer. The multiplayer has some of the most memorable maps in COD history and overall it is a lot of fun but rarely did I ever play online multiplayer. The same goes for any other 360 games with multiplayer, so what my brother and I did is that we just add in a bunch of bots, select the map, and maximize the number of slots that you can use to customize your loadouts. It was great, though it did get a bit repetitive and boring sometimes, but for the most part, it was still a lot of fun. Oh, and you also can't forget zombies. While the game only has a few maps for zombies, 
they're still quite memorable and fun. Now Advanced Warfare sucks, but this was the first COD game I aimed to get all of the achievements. At least the ones I could get by playing the campaign. I didn't really care about the story, but I was down for its futuristic setting. The robots, the weapons, the sound design, it's so satisfying. Of course you're not an Xbox guy if you don't have a Halo game. The first Halo game I ever played was Halo Reach. The last game Bungie put out for the series that takes place before the first game, Halo Combat Evolved. I have a lot of great memories playing this game, mainly the campaign, firefight, and forge. You haven't played multiplayer? Yeah, I haven't played it because the Xbox One was nearly a year old and I couldn't find a single lobby and gave up. But that all changed when I finally bought the Master Chief Collection. Now I can play the multiplayer of Reach and the other Halo games. Back then, most of my memories playing this game was me and my brother playing the campaign in co-op. Uh, we would just mess around with each other and get a taste of what suffering is like by playing the campaign in Legendary. Another 360 exclusive title I played was Forza Horizon. Now, I'm not a big fan of the racing genre of video games, but driving around in this game feels so satisfying along with the music playing in the background, and this game still looks stellar to this day. Now I haven't exactly been in this game before, but it doesn't matter. The only reason I play a racing game is to go super fast with Freebird playing in the background. Speaking of Forza, I did play a few other Forza Motorsport games. Forza Motorsport 2, 3, and 4. If I were to pick my favorite out of those three, it would definitely be Forza Motorsport 3. But as I said, I don't have a ton of memories playing racing games, but I do remember usually coming back to this game when I was a kid. Oh shit, I own this thing? Yeah, I'm one of those guys that own the Kinect, happy. Of course, you don't fully own a Kinect when you don't have its pack in game, Kinect Adventures. This game demonstrates the power of the Kinect which tracks your body movement using its motion sensors and camera. Now, is this game easy to control? No. Is there much to do in this game? No. Is this game fun? That depends on what you view as fun, but for me, no. Another title that demonstrates the power of the Kinect is Kinect Sports, which is basically a direct response to Wii Sports with the Wii. This should have been the pack and game for the Kinect instead of Kinect Adventures. This game is way more engaging and way more fun that it involves you trying to be more active within the game. And the overall content this game has compared to Kinect Adventures is much better. The controls work really well, especially with boxing and track and field. Another Kinect title I played was Kinect Rush, a Disney Pixar adventure game. This game is my favorite Kinect title, but it's far from perfect. Just like any other Kinect title, the controls aren't the best, but they're okay enough in this game. You can customize your own character and you can play in various scenes of other Disney Pixar movies along with the characters that belong to those movies. It's really fun to play with some of the most iconic Disney Pixar characters of all time. But like I said, the controls are what keep me away from this game and the only reason I want to come back to this game is for childhood pleasure. What is this? Dance Central 2, another game I played back then and had loads of fun with it. My family and I would play this game for hours just dancing to some popular songs, especially the Numa Numa song. It's still amazing to see that this series is still alive with the 2019 release. So the 2019 release isn't compatible with the Kinect anymore, as it was released exclusively on the Oculus Quest, a VR system. I would definitely like to see a return for the Kinect. While yes, the Kinect is what killed the Xbox 360 in its late years and the Xbox One in its early years, I would still like to see the Kinect return to some form. Now that is pretty much the vast majority of games I remember playing on the 360 back then. So let's move on to another platform, the PSP. This PSP was handed down to me by my uncle. It had a ton of great games included and by that, I don't mean those games. To start off, Iron Man. The controls aren't great but the graphics look so good at the time. I never finished this game because I always get confused with the controls. So what about a game that has great controls? Here is Star Wars Battlefront Renegade Squadron. When I first played this game, I was amazed by the graphics and all. It's so fun to play as some of the most memorable Star Wars characters of all time. The maps are huge and there are tons of ways to advance against your enemies. 
I would dominate my enemies, and by that, I mean bots. Yeah, I never really figured out how to play online with a PSP, but I didn't really bother with it. Speaking of Star Wars, I also played Star Wars The Force Unleashed. The controls on this game are amazing and it really works well with the PSP. This game is a lot of fun and the story is really engaging. Sure, there are some flaws in the story of these games, but you gotta admit, they have better writing than... Somehow Palpatine returned. <laughs> I remember putting in cheat codes in this game so that I could play as Obi-Wan, Anakin, Luke, and any other character within the Star Wars universe, even though they don't have anything to do with the main story of the game. There are these side quests where you can play as specific characters within some of the most iconic battle scenes in Star Wars history. This game is amazing, but there is one other game that is memorable for me. Persona 3 Portable. This is the game for the PSP. This game takes about 65 and a half hours to complete. There's just a ton of stuff to do here. And the main gameplay is astonishing. This is the first turn-based RPG I have ever played and it really changed my perspective on pretty much every variety of role-playing games. The story is amazing. The choices you make have a really great impact on how the story turns out. The dungeons are well designed, there's a lot of enemy variety. The game can be a bit hard at times, but back then the difficulty was okay for me. So that's pretty much all the childhood video games that I could think of. Another huge portion of my video game childhood originated from the iPad, and if mobile games are considered to be real video games, then might as well include them here. Temple Run, Jetpack Joyride, Fruit Ninja, Flappy Bird, Geometry Dash, Plants vs Zombies, Tiny Tower, and of course, Minecraft. These games, while simple, holds a ton of value to me, and the types of games that we played back when we were kids made us who we are today. So if you're reminiscing about the good old days, if you still have those games lurking around in your basement, go ahead and play them. There's no harm being a child at heart. So I wish you all a Merry Christmas and see you all next year.